New mic. New mic. Oh. Hello everyone, so welcome back to Copying Art. Now our candidate for today is going to be Clockbird, requested by She People. So if you don't know, Clockbird is a very talented illustrator and her specialty is on concept art and landscape. Now the first time I saw Clockbird is when I was signing up for DeviantArt as a feature. So I'm going to be breaking down her art and it's going to be tough but yes, we're going to try it and here it is. Alright, so if you look at Clockbird's art, you will immediately notice the great details of her creatures and landscapes in her drawings. But some of her technique I've already talked about in my previous videos, but I've never actually talked about background. So yeah, we're going with that. Alright, so first I want to talk about how she uses shapes and values to immediately hit her mind with enough information of which is which in the drawing. Alright, so if you look at this sketch that I made for this video, what do you think is this? Hmm? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about it. You did not get it. Of course you won't because there's not enough information in this for you to understand what that is that. So establishing the right shapes, values, and light direction early on in the sketching phase will greatly help you with your drawing. Now because details are not important. That was a joke. Alright, so let me just time lapse this one first and I'll check back soon. <music> see the shape of the pillar, the direction of the light, form of the beast without having the details yet. Even if I zoom out in this in thumbnail size, you can still understand what the picture is. Uh, a dinosaur in a canyon, I guess. And with that, also keep in mind the three parts of every painting. Mid-ground, foreground, and background. Mid the foreground, midground, and background. Alright, so essentially, this rock in here is the same one as this one over here. But adding the rules of background and foreground, you can see that this one is saturated, while this one is more saturated. It's the same rock, it's just in the different distance. Since this part right here is in the background, covered with dust and whatever it is in the atmosphere, it got desaturated and less detailed. Keep in mind the less desaturated part. No one's gonna care if you draw 50 individual leaves for every branch of every tree. No one's gonna see that. Just draw the form of the tree and move on. Anyways, I'm just going to keep working on this. Since I have everything that I need to know, this will be smooth sail. Yeah. <laughs> So if you just come here to understand how she does the fur texture of every creature in her drawings, then this is the part. And here is the secret. There's no secret. Due in the inspirational music. This is just dedicated, pure, sheer commitment of hard work and refinement. Now being a great artist doesn't just come overnight. Being a great artist doesn't come from one single video. This talent comes from years and years of studying, experience, experiments, and just drawing. There's no mystical photo editing trick that is happening here. It's just her mind is used to this technique. And that's why she can do it as well as she can right now. But if you just want to know the technique, I can show that to you as well. Alright, so there's two kinds of brushes that she uses in her drawings. So one is a standard round brush with 
pen pressure, and another is a texture brush. I noticed her using texture brushes to create her backgrounds, to blend the colors, and of course to add texture. Clearly she has a custom brush set, so, and I don't have any of that. There's also another brush that I observed while watching some of her videos, and that is a watercolor brush. I don't know what that is because that was in Photoshop and I'm using Krita. But the closest thing I got is this. Some texture brushes will be useful when you're creating fur texture are specifically those brushes with um, lines in it. And something like this or maybe this or, or a stump brush like this. You should also use a blender brush to blend the fur. But be careful not to use those smudge blender brushes. Use something like this one that drags the whole color along with your direction. Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing these kinds of things is that light affects fur. Well, light affects everything, but in this case, light affects fur. You know, if you watch Lion King or Detective Pikachu, you see this almost realistic looking fur that is on these creatures. That's because this artist applies the rules of light in the fur. You know, just like how light passes through our skin, making it reddish. Same goes for fur or hair. You know, light can still pass through solid things, especially soft things like hair or fur. That's why you should study these things when you're doing it. Or if you're lazy like I am, I just use a reference. <laughs> Alright, so I draw this so you can understand what I mean. So let's say this bulk of fur is in the back and this bulk of fur is in the front. Now the light is hitting the creature from the left, which means the light rays are hitting this fur as well. And since it's reflectable, it lights up the whole fur. But because this bulk of fur is there, that means it's casting a shadow to this fur, which is being blocked by that fur from the light source. You know, I suggest you become a barber first before you learn these kinds of stuff, okay? Alright, the point here is that you get these skills from learning it from over the years. You, I cannot just assume that from you watching this one video that you will be an expert at this. No, that's sorcery. Alright, so I'm just going to keep working on this and I hope you understand something. I'm still not good at explaining any art tips but yes, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and yeah. I hope that was to your liking and I hope everyone learned something, at least one thing. Again, if there's any artist that I can copy from, uh, please comment their names in the comment section. And yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.